And while Huawei has not been removed from the United States' so-called entity list, U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross did announce earlier this week that the ban on U.S. companies selling tech to the Chinese telecom giant have been relaxed. The move comes as tension between Washington and Beijing has cooled following a trade truce announced at the G20 summit in Osaka, Japan. John Quelch, dean of the University of Miami Business School, joins us now to break all this down. First, uh, Dean Quelch, walk us through what actions U.S. Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross took this week on the Huawei ban and the effects of his official actions. Right. Good afternoon. Um, you'll recall on May the 16th that uh, uh, Huawei was placed on the entity list uh, by the Department of Commerce, by the uh, Bureau of Industry and Security, as it's known. And uh, what's happened in the last uh, 48 hours is interesting. It's um, the fact that uh, the Secretary of Commerce, based on some comments that perhaps were made uh, on, on the sidelines of the G20 in Osaka, uh, has essentially um, relaxed the, uh, the ban on uh, U.S. companies um, selling to Huawei. Um, so they, 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 you'll recall that there was a 90-day uh, window after May 16th during when U.S. companies had the opportunity to um, re make adjustments to their uh, supply chains and to perhaps, uh, if they couldn't, uh, ask for license permission from Washington uh, to continue to sell to uh, Huawei. Uh, but it looked as though that was going to be very difficult for them to do. No doubt as a function of internal lobbying on the part of those companies in Washington, uh, there seems to be more of a mellow attitude. Uh, the president on the sideline of the G20 indicated that he was uh, quite happy for companies to continue to sell uh, to Huawei. And so there, there have been a few contradictory signals here uh, from various parts of the administration. But it looks for the moment as though uh, Huawei is going to be able to still source from U.S. companies if they obtain the appropriate licenses from the Department of Commerce. And it looks much more likely that that will continue after the 90 days uh, following the May the 16th uh, imposition of Huawei onto the entity list. Right. And Secretary Ross, when announcing the adjustments to the ban, uh, emphasized Huawei itself remains on the entity list. And the announcement does not change the scope of items requiring licenses from the Commerce Department, nor, he said, the presumption of denial. So it sounds like he's trying to curb expectations, but then his cabinet colleague, Stephen Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, according to the Wall Street Journal, is urging U.S. companies to seek those licenses, despite this uh, presumption of denial that the Commerce Secretary referred to. Is there a mixed message coming from the administration here, and what would that tell us about uh, the policymaking process? Well, there's often a mixed message coming from any administration um, because the uh, political uh, reality requires a, a measure of balance. And so what I think is going on here is the following. The Department of Commerce is in charge of the entity list. Uh, Huawei was placed on the entity list, rightly or wrongly. And the Department of Commerce has to live with that uh, decision. Um, what uh, we're seeing here is the Treasury Secretary uh, encouraging companies to uh, uh, make application for licenses to continue to sell to Huawei. It would be a little bit more problematic for the Commerce Secretary to go out and uh, advertise that invitation, but it's easier for the Treasury Secretary to do so. So I think that although it may seem like a contradiction, uh, the relaxation of policy um, is proceeding and uh, it's the Treasury Secretary rather than the Commerce Secretary that's simply announcing uh, the invitation to companies to uh, apply for these licenses. As you say, there is still a presumption of denial. In other words, uh, that's part of the part of the uh, entity list review process, a presumption of denial uh, for any license application. But I think uh, uh, the reality of the next uh, few weeks will probably see uh, quietly those licenses is um, assigned. Right. And Dean Quelch, on the larger question, uh, does the way the administration has chosen to implement this agreement to relax the ban give us any insight into the prospects for an agreement on the larger trade fight between the U.S. and China? 
Um, I think we're largely in a stalemate uh, at the moment. Um, it doesn't look as though there's going to be any further escalation in the short term. Uh, talks are scheduled to recommence uh, this week, as a matter of fact, uh, between the two sides. Uh, I would say that as a generalization, um, the administration has um, conducted its business here in the following way. There's typically a high drama announcement, uh, such as putting Huawei on the entity list, uh, which uh, makes the administration look as though it's being tough on China. Uh, but then in the small type, uh, there's a 90-day process that accompanies that. And now um, there's the opportunity for further relaxation of the, uh, the license uh, assignment process. So typically, it's kind of two public steps forward. Uh, in terms of tough on China and then one step back uh, to accommodate uh, U.S. commercial interests that obviously are going to be upset if they're no longer able to uh, earn export dollars by right. selling to uh, Huawei. And uh, in our last minute here, moving from uh, policy to or process to personnel, on the U.S. side, many observers are pointing to the president's Pierre Navarro, whose official title is assistant to the president for trade and manufacturing policy, and he's also the head of this new National Trade Council. But his perceived role is essentially to push a hard line on China. How significant is Mr. Navarro's presence and influence, and could he personally uh, be responsible for stopping an agreement? Well, there, there are hawks and there are doves on uh, uh, the China issue and on uh, uh, international trade more broadly. Uh, Mr. Navarro has consistently been a hawk on this issue. He views there as having been many, uh, many violations on the Chinese side over many years and that China has secured unfair trade and tariff advantages as a result of that. Uh, and so he's consistently been uh, a hawk on this issue. I think um, he does have significant influence with the president. He does have the air of the president. Um, but I think one of the more substantial larger issues is just how important is it to the president to secure a deal uh, before the next uh, election next year? Right. Um, can this state of uh, stalemate continue through next year uh, with the president continuing to assert that he's the toughest politician in the arena right. when it comes to dealing with China? Excellent insight, as always, from John Quelch, Gina, the Business School at the University of Miami. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you.